Well, let's go in the other door here. Keep all quiet and stuff. So, today is uh, Brandon's last day, and we gotta put together a nice little parting package for him or whatever, have a little party. So I gotta send the birch out to go get some stuff and then uh, get a little parting gift for him so he doesn't know about all of it. Aside from getting the entire chassis built up, I'm gonna reinforce all this stuff. Make it super strong and meaty and beefy. But yeah, it's gonna be an interesting day. Paint this all gold and put his initials in there. It's kind of a kind of a joke, but they send Birch out to get the paint. The golden tape gun was kind of just brought back from one day when we were just goofing around. And I said, "Well, when you hit a year or you've done a hundred thousand coupons, I'll give you a golden tape gun." And since he definitely hit his year and he cleared his hundred k, it was like I had to make sure he went away with with what I promised I would do. Brandon White. That's his initials but I'm just gonna put a big B on it right now. So my dad's actually friends with Justin. They've known each other for about two years. And one day, my dad asked Justin, he's like, hey, do you have any work my son can do? And that's how I ended up here. I've probably done, you know, about 120,000 coupons past the year. He's getting up there, he's probably done like 5,000. He's taking the reins, he's got, he's got me all locked. It's really hard to lose somebody that you've kind of really grown close with or at least worked with for quite some time. Now, Brandon leaving was a, is a, it's kind of a shocker, but you can't really stop him from doing it. You want to see him go, you want to see him succeed, of course. They're just absolutely amazing at what he does. I kind of hope every employee is just like him or works just like him. Those dry nicely. And Back to work on the chassis. Today's mission is all about getting the chassis finished up. We got to add ourselves a couple of fish plates over the joints. We have to add a few gussets and uh, make sure that we get the bags and the mounts in there. I'm waiting for them to come in on UPS. Hopefully they'll be here, but we're going to get it done. We get bracing from those two lowers up to here to triangulate square this in. I'm most likely going to do the exact same thing from here to there. Square those in. And then we'll add in some fish plates, which are sections of flat that go over these welds to help reinforce them. The big problem that we have here is, well, it's all relative to load. So when the bags go on, they're gonna be over axle and they're gonna hold the weight of the vehicle and that load is gonna kinda of wanna spread on these joints, on these miter joints. Now, a lot of people ask about C-notches, if they should be you know, vertical, at an angle, whatever the case is. And it's not really the notch that's the problem, it's more of having a miter joint that's the problem. So that's why I laid down one good solid root pass, ground it, grooved it, and then laid down a, uh, a cap over it just to make sure that we had solid penetration. Of course, I did that with the TIG as well. So I'm gonna go a little overkill on, the, on this back end here, but you know, it's, it's not really a bad thing to do that. Get rid of that, get rid of that. There is one fish plate. I gotta make it look better than that. That looks like crap. Get rid of some of these dreadful looking corners. There. So no sharp edges on it. We'll just go all the way around. Apply. It's a lot of wasted material. I think I'll just cut the ones that I know for a fact I'm gonna need. Well, I don't really need them much on the inside because I got tubes going in there. Tubes will tie into the joint, so I only technically need them on the outside, so that's what, four or eight of them. Yeah, eight's enough. Eight's enough. So that, kind of like a band-aid, close to this joint. Weld that out all the way around. One on each spot. We should be good.
we don't remember how this goes back together. on the inside and that's where it's going to want to normally stretch break crack all the rest of that stuff so it's not a good idea to put it up here and we really don't need it to cover the entire thing it's just only in that section there where it's going to be most affected we're just going to add a little bit more support on the inside over here we also have this tube up top here and then down here we'll have another tube that reaches up over here that will also stabilize this and make sure that it doesn't want to move as much you know as then before so down here there's really no load that's going to pull back and want to split it this way but for the sake of youtube we'll still put another fish plate on there i think i want a heavy well so we'll just run on a 316 set as far as the tacks and all that are concerned i want to make sure it gets on all the main places so that way when i'm welding it i tend to make really long runs and not do short intervals i try to make the whole run in one shot or at least as much as i can until i get you know say uncomfortable or something like that so um just making sure there's enough tack welds on there to get around to the places that i normally would go and how i would typically run it and then uh it won't lift or it won't warp on me while i'm doing that and it's not really an exact science we could measure all this out but uh it's literally just a just there to help hold everything in place, keep you know a little support on it. And I'm not overly worried about this this chassis and everything else like that anyway, so. Oh no! I guess I really hadn't thought about that. I don't know what I'm gonna do there. Numbers. Wow. That's why she figured roughly. That's a lot of friggin' coupons. <laughs> 116,000. Oh, that looks terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Those are my bags? I'm assuming so. Where are they from? Eastern Florida? Yeah, Indiana. Those are my bags. Come on, boats. Where's your knife? What? Doesn't know how to use it. Yeah. We'll stab it. Yeah, of course. Head towards your buddy, not your body. <laughs> There's the airline. We want that. Close the bag. If there's anybody that can do this, it would be me. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Little ones go in the front. These ones go about right there. And we're good. What to do? It's not skin, is it? No, it's tea. I'm gonna get back to making really bad looking well. Bad enough the fish plates kind of look like band-aids, now they look like used band-aids. <laughs> Ew! 
Yeah, they look pretty ugly, but even ugly welds hold. All right, so that weld was just, there's a lot of porosity in it. There was a bunch of bubbles. I don't know if it's because I was shaking. Maybe we got a gust of wind. Maybe there was some crap underneath it. Just, if you, that happens to you, just grind the thing out and run back over it again. Just clean it all back out. You gotta be honest with yourself on stuff like this. It's like, no, this is not a critical joint, but at the same time, it's like, don't do that. Just fix it. I measured these out or based my dimensions on the longer leg here. So the back of the chassis is shorter. So when we try to put it up there, it overlaps this one. And I'll just, you know, I'll make a notch out of it or do something else. It's more important to me right now to get the chassis gusseted and get all those pieces and parts in there. So if you don't know how airbags work, this is effectively the same thing as a spring. Uh, they usually call them air springs too. But basically, uh, it goes on over the axle and then the top end attaches to the chassis. And then if we pump it with air, it expands, which will lift the chassis up. And if we let the air out, it will drop, which uh, it will compress to uh, make the chassis go down. So we put these in here, aside from like the ultimate ride comfort, you know, they, they perform pretty well too. But uh, the whole purpose here is just to make it go up and down. That's all we're doing with it. So I gotta design some plates real quick and blast all those out. Can you no. cut that off? Like right behind the welds? Not going this way, but down. So you still have a little bit of that, that break on it. Let's just do it this way. Start with that, and you're about five and a half inches. And then the bag itself is about seven and a half for clearance. Okay, so let's see. I want it to be away from the chassis about an inch. Yeah, two and three quarter, and three and a quarter. There's a there's a taper on the axle, so where the bag is going to sit, smaller here and wider here. I have to make sure that, that comes out correctly in the design for the bracket. One, one inch radius, right there. That's gonna look like crap. I mean, it's, it's function over form all day long, but if it looks stupid, like I don't want to see it like that. I want to see like a different, you know, smoother looking, uh, you know, appeal to it or something along those lines. Then, you know, I always try to try to make it fit in there correctly. You know, that it, that it looks okay, that it looks decent, you know, it's, it's not critical if it, if it doesn't look all, you know, pretty like or whatever, but it's just, you know, you always try to, you always try to do something that looks decent, you know? But right now I'm just trying to nest them in here as best as I can to waste the least amount of material. So I think we're good there. Instead of trying to mark it out, measure it out, get it in the brake correctly, I'm gonna use the plasma to just scribe a line on it. It basically makes a mark on there and then I can line it up inside of the press brake squarely. Since we have no, pretty much no square reference to use here, it should, uh, it should help out a lot. Or keep them as clean as possible when we're cutting them. We intentionally slow down the plasma. The downside of doing that is you get a little bit more dross on the hole and sometimes it blows a pretty nasty bevel into it, but we get them as close as we possibly can and then go from there. So I always separate those into different layers so we can run that a little bit slower and then we can get the contours to cut at whatever speed we want them to cut. scribe lines face up and I'm going to kind of lock them in there you can kind of feel where they're going and that'll tell me that it's completely squared. So I'm not really sure how far I want to break these up or down. So I'm just going to start small. And wherever I decide that's where I want it to do, I'll make the other ones do the exact same thing. So. Some of this stuff, you just got to kind of play it by ear or feel or look and say, well, that'll do. 
You know, that was a pretty good guess right there. Even if I put it on upside down, which I know that's way too low. Our total stroke, airbag stroke, is uh, when it's compressed, it's 2.8 inches tall. So we have to set these up to where they're about 2.8 .8 inches off of that bag. And then also make sure that they are completely lined up. So it's either, they're either gonna be going up like this or they're gonna be flipped over the other way. I don't, I don't know yet. Sounds like Birch is back with hardware. Perfect timing, I love it. Brandon, get your ass out here! Go on, get your ass out of here! I mean, how cool is that when you leave and you bring a party gift? <laughs> That's really freaking sweet. Or a bottle of rosé and you bring it through. <laughs> so, Brandon, thank you for your dedicated service and your awesomeness and your willingness to keep going. And I really hope that you prosper and go far and all of that other inspiring. Well, thank you, Justin. <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I should tell you, I did, I did get you a gift. <laughs> oh my god. I guess I'll finish. Have a box cutter? <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, you gotta know what it's gonna be like to undo tape. You always put it on, you gotta learn how to take it off. <laughs> Where does this start? I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna be like an index card with like an IOU. IOU. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think I was that good. Oh whoa! I love that. <laughs> That's so cool. I love it. So some swag for you to hang on your wall or whatever you like. This is going right out of my desk. You, did you, you made a prediction earlier about how many coupons you've, uh, you've yeah. bagged up. We have a pretty damn good guess, man. What'd you say earlier? I said 120,000. You were really, really close. Your total amount of coupons since you've been here, minus that one month you took off and kind of a guess a minute about who else is in there or whatever, your total hand wiped and bagged coupons. All right. 116,092. <laughs> that makes your hands hurt to think about it. I'm sorry, hands. All of these. <laughs> it's very humbling. I don't feel like I deserve any of this. Wow. Look, you have any idea what you've done? <laughs> I have an idea, but man. It's like where it all started, and I really thought you would not even be here for a single week. I thought you'd be like, nah, this sucks. I'm out of here. You're gonna walk away being like, boy, this guy's dumb. <laughs> Brandon and I pretty much had a, <laughs> we had a lot of really interesting inside jokes. They always made the day go, you know, go better or flow smoother, whatever the case is. I don't know, just the, the regular daily things that just, you know, hard to describe. But you stuck around all through that and just kept going and going and going making it so much easier for me to get my job done or actually do what I do to rely on you to do that. That's incredible. So you've really helped us build it up. That's like amazing. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Sad to see you go, though. It is sad. The whole thing with the party today is just to say I really appreciate everything you've done and to help this company grow to where it is now and even stick around for as long as he has, absolutely incredible. And to show as much appreciation as we can for all of that, it's the least that we could do. And even crazier that he still wanted to work a full day even after wanting to, uh, you know, being offered the opportunity to go home with pay, he's still running the full day. He even brought us beer as a, as a going away thing. I mean. I'm really, really going to miss him. So I 110% dumbassed my way into this one. And I did the uh, measurement on the holes. They're space apart from where I measured, but I forgot to subtract the diameter of one hole to make them centered where they're supposed to be. So I gotta do a little stretching on those holes. Somewhere about there. Get it. 
See, it's kind of a good thing that I cut this to the actual size and the diameter of that bag plate on the bottom there, so that way, if the holes are just slightly off, I can kind of tweak it around and then match it up to the actual plate here, which is a good thing. It'll be a tight squeeze, but we'll be able to get them out of there. It'd be one of the worst things in the world. You set it all up and then you get it all tightened down and then you realize that you can't actually take the airbag out of there. That's an ultimate fail. So make sure that you actually have the clearance. In this case, the, uh, the airbag itself sits above the axle by one inch. And that's also, that coincides to what we did uh, with the height of the notches and the clearance for the axle because the bag when totally collapsed on paper it comes out to 2.8 inch, inches tall so when we set it all up on here we should have that uh, well if we can collapse and there's no weight on the chassis it's going to be difficult to do but when we set it all up here we'll get this side on and this bracket on here and then when we collapse it see if we can get it welded on right about the height that they're supposed to be sitting at while they're on the chassis. height is there and in consideration easier to hang over the top of the chassis a little bit so rather than chop them off and make it look kind of ugly I'll just uh, just break them back the other way and that should line up with the top of our chassis and actually come out really really close that ought to do it just a bit of blast attack like right down in there that corner yeah somewhere in there Good? Not yet. Go. Ah, that's why it's pretty close and not dead on. Tiny bit, come on. I don't know what the hell is the guard there for? Go. Oh, you might want to double tap that one. That's mean. Tell him, Mom. Your mom likes me, so. I think what we'll end up doing, most likely, before, because these aren't going to get broken in and actually settled in and all the rest of that and really pressed down. So, what we're probably going to end up having to do is cheat a little bit by strapping the axle to the chassis and forcing it to come down to actual. Uh, frame height because we're we're maybe a fraction maybe an eighth of an inch or so uh, off the ground of where we're supposed to be at by the looks of it which is yeah maybe an eighth of an inch so that little extra settling in there we're just gonna have to maybe force it down or whatever but if the if we had the weight of the body on there we wouldn't have this issue they'd be bottoming out right now but what we got is what we got well I'll have to go get fat until tomorrow I, guess. I forgot they told me that the uh the fittings that for I the ordered bags. for the bags, they're, they're, out, they're out of stock right now. So I think tomorrow we'll just run over there in the morning and grab them. I wanted to see it air up. <laughs> I want to go pssst. See how high the thing goes. Put your air in there and hold the rag right over Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I can crop it. 
you want another one? Why don't you air it up? Probably the best part about the day was actually seeing the suspension work. Once we fill the bags up and see it actually start moving and the motion's working on it and everything is just doing exactly what it was meant to do, that's probably the most gratifying part of the day, or most exciting at least. Watch her freak out when I, when I, let, the, when I let the bags out. We'll see it in action. You're not easily smooth, go away. <laughs> Love you. I need one gusset to go from down here all the way up to somewhere around here. I'm just gonna do 45 degree cuts on it. Where it lands is where it lands. They don't have to go up to the center, none of that stuff. So rather than racking my brain trying to figure out exactly how long they need to be here, there, and all the rest of that, I'm just gonna go take some measurements, throw it in the cab really fast, and then I'll find out exactly where it, where it needs to go. That's 12 inches plus two, that's 14, and this one is seven and a quarter plus two, which is nine and a quarter, so 14 and 9.25. This should be pretty quick. Two, let's see, two of them need to be 17 and three quarters, the other two need to be at 11. Cut them, weld them, slap them in there for you to I thought you'd have one done by now. <laughs> oh, you want one already? Yeah. So notice how this goes right through there? Effectively acts like a fish plate, just like we needed to have before. That's exactly where I want it to be. That will also help strengthen it. For another beer? <laughs> you know it. That, that is rude. <laughs> I should have seen that one. <laughs> Take the bags off of it and lay down some stuff. I also got to figure out what to do about that fish plate on the outside. I think. I mean, it doesn't need it at this point, just because we have this, which acts as the exact same thing. Not to mention it also stabilizes. I do need to put a bar on the back here for the end of the chassis. However, I haven't decided yet exactly how long I want it because this area right here, including this up top here, this is where all the fuel cell, air tanks, all that is gonna go. It's gonna be very hidden. This area inside of here is gonna be trunk space. And if you didn't catch that one, it's not gonna be a truck anymore. So, yeah. All right, all we gotta get done now is completely weld out this chassis, and pretty much it's done. Now, after careful consideration and just a really quick run of math here, we really don't need a fish plate right here. It is near useless, so. I am going to add another one on the inside here because this is where all the load is on the chassis. So this uh, gusset that's in here, since it ties into where it's at, there's virtually no load on here and anything that is in there will be braced as well by the chassis. So we're not going to waste our time with that. You know, if we just wanted to make YouTube happy, I mean, whatever, but I'm not going to bother. But on the inside here and on the inside over there, we're going to add another fish plate just to be double sure here. So, cause that's, this is where the load is at. It's coming up here and once it's bent that way. So that's gonna get uh, put in there, but the rest of it, just quick, easy weld it up. cycle once and I kind of expected that I would. So, so far that's definitely a plus one for the Multimatic 220 ACDC. That's pretty awesome. But chassis is welded out. We're pretty much done for the day. 
That's where we'll say see you later. So the rear section is pretty much finished up. Maybe a little bit of a mount or something else here and there that we might throw in later, but as far as I'm concerned, it's done. We can move on to the front section and that's what's coming up next.